To begin with, I told you that Linux kernel supports uh, dynamically loading modules, right? You can load modules in the kernel. These modules can either be some kernel library functions, which can be used by various other subsystems in the kernel, or it could also be most device drivers. In fact, I could say like close to 80% of device drivers in the Linux kernel can be built as kernel modules, loadable kernel modules, which includes all these uh, subsystem drivers, like you know PCI-based drivers, USB-based drivers, all this can be built as a module, right? So the first thing is that, you know, it's similar to the whole concept of loadable modules in kernel. It's synonymous to this uh, .so file that you know in user space, right? So what's the purpose of .so file? It contains some functions which will extend the program's functionality, right? So it's like a shared library. So think of it like a shared library implementation within the kernel, right? So extending the kernel's functionality. So I can say that this allows uh, most of the drivers and libraries to be written and uh, it's analogous to this. And building the kernel with support for NKM, right, makes it more modular. That means your core kernel will be having minimal memory footprint, right? You don't have to bundle all the drivers into the monolithic kernel. You only have essential drivers in the core kernel and other drivers you can load on demand only when needed and unload them when not required, right? It's one of the features that you see. And you can just see that uh, something you should know about uh, the Linux kernel modules. They don't have separate thread of execution. Kernel modules are not processes, nor they are threads. Right? You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, even if you have your user space application, you load a library, the library is not a separate thread or a process. It's just an extended function to your existing thread of execution. Right? So it's the first thing you should know. They all share the kernel, all kernel global data structures and functions. All global variables and global data structures, I mean, I'll say global fu all functions that the kernel defines, the modules share them. It's possible that a module corruption or a module overflowing a buffer is not a bug in the module, it's a bug in the entire kernel. If now I have a kernel module which has allocated a buffer of let's say about uh, uh, 100 bytes and it overflows a buffer beyond 100 bytes, it may not just corrupt the module, it can, depending on where that buffer is, get, get, is allocated in memory, it corrupt any other kernel data structure or a function, right? So this can be a bug in the kernel, right? So most modules must be written carefully in terms of debugging and diagnostics. You must make sure that your module is thoroughly tested. Any module that is thoroughly tested, does a bug in a module, is a bug in the kernel because Linux is a monolithic kernel architecture. So the modules run in kernel mode. All module functions run in kernel mode, right? That's one of the things that you see. But however, all symbols that you declare, if at all I create a kernel module, within a module I can declare my own variables, declare my own functions, right? <coughs> the good thing is that these functions and variables are not visible to the rest of the kernel by default. It's a good design, you know why? Two different people write two different drivers, right? Uh, uh, you know, user A writes a driver, user B writes a driver. And both of these drivers, both of these driver writers accidentally right, chose one variable name which looks identical. So this driver writer created one variable called port. This driver writer also created a variable called port. And both are global variables. You cannot load both these drivers, why? Because you cannot have two global variables with the same name, isn't it? To avoid it, this whole module symbols are private to that module. So Linux kernel uses some kind of namespace like mechanism. How does it do it? Whenever you try to build the module, the build system, right, the kernel's build system will mangle all the names of a module. It's called name mangling. This is a technique used in C++ for implementing namespaces. The same technique is used in the kernel's build system. So if I create a variable called port, it will mangle that port with some checksum number. So when it's loaded, it will be the port with some prefix with some checksum number. Assign it. So, that checksum number is only identified by the code in the module which is referring to that function, right? The module symbol table will have name mangling employed to ensure that each module symbols do not have collision with the symbols <coughs> of another module or the code kernel. This is a good thing, right? But if at all, if a module wants to make one symbol, that is a variable or a function visible to the rest of the kernel, it has to employ a special technique of exporting the symbol. That's a macro, it's a simple macro. It will make sure that you know uh, the rest of the kernel can see that symbol, right? So it's a macro that will make it available. So modules are generally built with the cable system. That means you cannot, uh, in early days, still 2.4 kernel, uh, you could write a some, uh, you could write a C program and uh, you could actually use CC minus C and some minus capital D module and build it. You know, CC minus C, you get a .o file, isn't it? It compiles a C program to generate a .o file. That any .o file can be loaded as a module. That's in 2.4 kernel. But today, they have changed it. 
the module is a .o file with some extra sections. Those extra sections are automatically added by a cable system. Cable system is a super sophisticated make file which is used to build the kernel. The build system that is used to build the kernel is what will build your module. That means you can't write a rule telling what compiler flags to use to build your module. Why? Because your module is going to get integrated in the kernel. So what compiler flags were used to build the kernel, the same flags must be used to build the module. Which also adds one more limitation. You cannot uh, build a module without building the kernel. And saying it, suppose I have a kernel running, just a VM Linux kernel running. I can just have a module built and loaded. Before building the module, you should have done the kernel build. That means the kernel build files must be there for a module to be built. That means a, a module is treated to be an intrinsic part of the kernel's build system. It's part of the kernel, right? Always, right? That's what it is. So it is one of the things, you know, and... Uh, but then, uh, the driver vendors module, if we want to add it, then how that will happen? Right. It's very, very, very difficult to distribute modules as binaries. If I distribute a module as a binary, I should make sure that the module I build I mean, on which kernel I build on, yeah, the target machine should run the exactly same kernel, same build. You know what I'm trying to say? For example, if I write a module on my machine and if I create a .ko file, luckily if I put this .ko file on all your VMs, it will work because we are sharing the same kernel build. But if you recompile the kernel by changing certain flags, changing certain artifacts of the kernel, my .ko file will not load. But this is post 2.4 as you said. Yes, since 2.6. Since 2.6 onwards is the, this is how the build system has been changed. That means the module is tightly coupled with the kernel build. I might have the same version of the kernel, right? You know, maybe I have 3.1, 2.2, even you people have 3.1, 2.2. But you went offline and rebuilt the kernel. And you made some changes in the kernel configuration. Because I would have built kernel with support for SMP. And you chose, okay, let's not have SMP build, we'll do a uniprocessor build. That's a tremendous change. So if I compile a module on my machine, mm -hmm. which is using SMP build of the kernel, the .ko file, if I put it on your machine, try to load it, it will definitely not load. You'll get a error message, invalid module format. That's fine. So the kernel build must be common. That's fine. That's one thing. That's why because the module is tightly coupled to a particular kernel build. So which makes distributing binary modules a big challenge.